Namaste and hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Savahini Vajra Astra. I'm Ohona. In today's video, I'm going to share some books which I would recommend for part two of the Nightingale August Challenge Readathon 2021. Now, the Nightingale August Challenge Readathon is a month long readathon which would be uh, running during the entirety of August on this particular channel. And um, the announcement video to this particular readathon is given in the description box below. Uh, also, uh, the book recommendations for the participation requirements uh, for this challenge is also given in another link uh, in the description box below. So in this video, I'm going to recommend books for part two of this particular readathon, which is absolutely optional. And uh, there is no hard and fast rule that you need to um, attempt any of the challenges. In case if you are interested in exploring a bit about um, the Victorian medical history or uh, if you do find any of the challenges interesting or if you wish you can uh, double up or triple up on the prompts, it's absolutely up to you. You definitely uh, can attempt any of the challenges. So let's get down to the book recommendations and do join me further in this video. So now let's come down to challenge number two. So challenge number two is to read a book written by Florence Nightingale. So I do have a few books to suggest. The first book that I would suggest is called Florence Nightingale Notes on Nursing, What It Is and What It Is Not. And um, from the back of the book, it reads as, from the best known work of Florence Nightingale, the originator and founder of modern nursing comes a collection of notes that played an important part in the much needed revolution in the field of nursing. For the first time, it was brought to attention of those caring for the sick that their responsibilities covered not only the administration of medicines and the applications of poultices, but the proper use of fresh air, light, warmth, cleanliness, quiet, and the proper selection and administration of diet. Miss Nightingale is outspoken on these subjects as well as the other factors that she considers essential to good nursing. But whatever her topic, her main concern and attention is always on the patient and his needs. Now this is a book which is which has content which is actually very good for general knowledge as well. So in case of you're caring for anyone who is not feeling well, this book comes really handy. So that's the first book that I would recommend. The second book that I would recommend is called uh, Cassandra Florence Nightingale's um, Angry Outcry Against the Forced Illness of Victorian Women. So this is a very short book, but from the back of the book it reads as 
The world knows Florence Nightingale as the Lady of the Lamp, the revered founder of nursing as an acceptable profession for women. But few people are aware that Nightingale's career only began after years of ceaseless struggle to free herself from the suffocating restrictions of a middle-class Victorian family. In this surprising, passionate feminist essay, Nightingale denounces the lives of idleness and frivolity, which she and other Victorian women of her class were forced to lead. So this is a book that I would like to recommend. That's the second recommendation. The third recommendation would be called Suggestions for Thought by Florence Nightingale, Selections and Commentaries, which has been edited by Michael D. Calabria and Janet A. Macaray. I just hope you can see this because the light is shining on it. So that's the book. So from the back of the book, it reads as Florence Nightingale is best known as the founder of modern nursing, a reformer in the field of public health and a pioneer in the use of statistics. It is not generally known, however, that Nightingale was at the forefront of the religious, philosophical and scientific thought of her time. In her three volume work, Suggestions for Thought, she presented her radical spiritual views motivated by the desire to give those who had turned away from the conventional religion an alternative to atheism. Nightingale never published Suggestion for Thought and very few biographers have discussed the work in every detail or in any detail, I'm sorry. In this volume, Michael D. Calabria and Janet A. Macaray provide the essence of Nightingale's spiritual philosophy by selecting and reorganizing her best written treatments. The editors have also provided an introduction and commentary to set the work into a biographical, historical and philosophical context. This work illuminates a little known dimension of Nightingale's personality, bringing forth the ideas that served as the guiding principle of her work. It is also a historical document presenting the religious issues which were fiercely debated in the second half of the 19th century. In many ways, however, much of it is surprisingly relevant today when humanity is still trying to reconcile with faith. In Suggestion for Thought, one has the opportunity to experience a great practical mind of the modern history as it grapples with the most profound questions of human existence. As these basic human issues are universal and timeless, Nightingale's words are as immediate and compelling now as they were over a century ago. Suggest suggestions for thoughts will be of interest to students and scholars of Victorian social history, religious studies, women's studies and history of medicine and nursing studies. So this would be the third book that I would recommend. Now, the fourth book is called Florence Nightingale Letters from Crimea, which has been compiled by Sue M. Goldie. So this is a book and it's quite a thick book. So there's nothing much written from the back of the book or from uh, the jacket, but it just says uh, that Florence Nightingale was one of the most prolific Victorian letter writers, yet no edition of her correspondence has ever been published. The hundred letters in this volume come from the period that brought her lasting fame. And from the back of the book, it reads as, whether you have read anything or nothing about Florence Nightingale, whether you admire her or loathe her, you should buy this book, which is written by The Lancet. I think Lancet was probably um, a publication group. So this is the um, book. It's um, got the letters of um, Florence Nightingale and it's actually very beautifully written. So those are the four books that I would suggest for challenge number two. Let's get down to challenge number three. Now, challenge number three is to read a book about a predecessor, a contemporary, or an immediate successor of Florence Nightingale, such as a predecessor, Dorothea Dix, a contemporary, Mary Seacole, a contemporary, Clara Barton, a contemporary, nurse and spy, Sarah Emma Edmonds, a successor, Edith Cavill, a successor Linda Richards and a successor Violet, Violeta Thurston. So I do have a few book recommendations. Now you could read one book for all these um, nurses who were predecessors, contemporary or successors of Florence Nightingale and they're all encompassed in this book called Extraordinary Nurses Throughout History. 
So this has been, um, it's been compiled and um, it's been compiled by various um, authors and it's actually an adaptation from various books. So um, from the back of the book, it reads as Extraordinary Nurses Throughout History. This book celebrates the amazing efforts of eight notable nurses collected in the honor of Florence Nightingale's 200th birthday. Throughout history, many notable women have helped create and improve the practice of modern nursing that we are all familiar with today. Since the first documented mention of professional nurses in approximately 300 AD, their contributions at times when nursing was much less well established are invaluable when studying how nursing has evolved throughout the ages. This fascinating and insightful exposition of the lives and achievements of notable nurses will appeal to those with an interest in the history of nursing and would make for a worthy addition to the collection of allied literature. So that's the first book that I would recommend. So it's got all these um, people whom I just mentioned or all the nurses who I just mentioned over here. So that will be the first recommendation. Now, if you would like to go for individual recommendations, I do have them as well. Now, uh, one of the contemporaries, um, Mary C. Cole, uh, so book recommendations. I just have two books um, on her uh, in physical uh, hard copy. So the first is called Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands. Now, this has been written by Mary Seacole. So you could read any of the books which are written by the contemporaries or predecessors or successors or anything about them or anything related to them. So this is the first book that I would recommend. And uh, from the back of the book, it reads as... Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands is the autobiography of a Jamaican woman whose fame rivaled Florence Nightingale's during the Crimean War. Mary Seacole travelled widely before eventually arriving in London, where her offer to volunteer as a nurse in the war was met with racism and refusal. Undaunted, she set out independently to Crimea, where she acted as a doctor and mother to wounded soldiers while running her business, the British Hotel. A witness to major battle, Seacole gives vivid accounts of how she kept with disease, bombardment and other hardships at the battlefront. Told with energy, warmth and humour, her remarkable life story is a key work of the 19th century literature that provides significant insights into the history of race politics. So that is the first book that I would recommend for Mary Sequel if you would like to read about her. Uh, the second book is a children's book, which is called The Extraordinary Life of Mary Sequel. And it's actually a children's book. And um, from the back of the book, it reads as the story of a woman who defied expectations to save people's life. Mary Seacole was born in Jamaica, where she grew up learning how to nurse from her mother. She traveled the world as a single woman using her medical skills to save the lives of countless soldiers of the Crimean War and became a beacon of hope for those in need. This is her extraordinary life. So that's the second book that I would recommend. There are other books of recommendation for Mary Seacole. So in case if you do come across it, you could definitely include that in your TBR. And obviously there is an, uh, there is an option for uh, listening to audiobooks because there are audiobooks available for these books as well. Now, uh, in case if you're interested in reading about Clara Barton, one of the books that I would suggest is by, written by Stephen B. Oates. A Woman of Valor, Clara Barton and the Civil War. Now she was also a, another contemporary of Florence Nightingale and as you can see it's quite a chunky book. Uh, from the back of the book it reads as A Woman of Valor, Clara Barton and the Civil War is a sensitive and illuminating biography of the founder of the American Red Cross that deserves a wide audience. This biography at its best as Oates makes clear these were the years that provided direction for Barton's life. To read of how Barton overcame doubt and discrimination to serve her country is to be reminded of how much one person can achieve. And there's a lot of things which is written over here, but um, that's the uh, main, I would say, main content which is written for this particular book. And this is actually a very comprehensive book. So, um, Yes, that's one of the suggestions that I would make. Now, there are other suggestions for each of the um, 
nurses that I have listed. Now, when it comes to Mary Seacole, I would like to clear that Mary Seacole was a doctress uh, in terms of um, the traditional medical system, but in terms of the Western system, she would be uh, viewed as a nurse. So this is something which is always a contradictory uh, subject because many people consider Mary uh, Seacole as a doctress. Uh, she was a doctress in terms of traditional medicine, but when viewed from the Western system, which was set by Florence Nightingale, she was actually um, categorized as a nurse. Now, there are other successors and uh, contemporaries, as well as predecessors, um, Dorothea Dix, that's only one predecessor. But in case of you do find um, other nurses who did contribute, who were near around um, uh, Florence Nightingale's um, age, um, I would say not age, but um, during her career. Uh, period uh, you definitely can include them as well and um, do please share your books in your TBR in a video so um, I'll just leave you with the other book recommendations for this particular challenge